Hey everyone, I'm Mark Sargent and this is Flat Earth Q&A emails number 138. Where you send me your Flat Earth questions to msargent23 at comcast.net. That's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net and I will do my best to answer them. Let's get right to it. First one's called Question About Gravity. Hi Mark, my name is James. I'm not a flat earther so to speak, but I also don't believe in deciding I don't believe something without at least trying to understand it. To that end, I have read some summaries of flat earth belief systems. I understand what different groups don't always agree on everything, but I have found answers to most of my questions about what members of the movement think, with one exception. After watching Behind the Curve, I figured you would be the best person to ask. I'm sure someone has answered this, and I just haven't found it, but here it is. If the phenomena of gravity is caused by a disk Earth accelerating upwards through space at a constant of 9.8 meters per second squared, then what would cause the effect of a person weighing less than a high, at high altitude than at sea level? And if that effect is caused by less atmosphere pushing down on them from above, then wouldn't we see the same result simply moving away from the center of the disk? In a dome, there would be less atmosphere over South Africa than Northern Alaska, so shouldn't people weigh less? This sounds really familiar. On a South African beach than atop an Alaskan mountain, whereas the opposite seems to be true. I would appreciate some help in finding these answers if you're able. If not, I still thank you for your time. Thanks, James Morris. Uh, short answer is we're not uh, a disk accelerating upwards through space. That's one of the most common misconceptions about flat Earth, which is that there is space. You got to remember, if it's flat and it's enclosed, if you're in a building, then why does there have to be space? You only make this space question because you think you're in space, because you're told you're in space over and over again until finally, finally you believe it. So even when you're looking at flat Earth, you're looking at flat Earth from space which is fascinating to me. It's like, okay, why would there be a disc in space? Nobody, nobody in Flat Earth believes that. All right, moving on. This one's called New to Flat Earth Thinking. Hi, Mark. I've only recently been introduced to the whole idea of anybody taking a serious stance in the area of believing the Earth is flat. I've, I've obviously heard that people used to believe it was flat, but with some fairly simple science, oh boy, that even a 10 year old could do it has been proven to be a sphere for a very very long time i've watched a few videos on the topic and i have come to believe that you are the one sitting back and letting smart people <laughs> oh man i didn't realize this was a troll video or a troll email but let's get into it use actual science to try to prove it to you that the earth is a sphere only for you to say now see how gullible you are for believing that never said that never even implied that then you throw out a whole bunch of mumbo jumbo. Is that a technical term, mumbo jumbo? That doesn't seem, uh, doesn't even make sense and roll your eyes like they are the crazy ones. <clears throat> Not at all. I really believe that you were delusional and you just totally get off on the attention that going against rational scientific thinking brings you. I have watched several videos that people have made to try to get you to understand that even a five-year-old, well, now we've gone from 10 to five, Ooh, okay, could understand and you dismiss them all. The real kicker was when National Geographic did a real scientific experiment right in front of you and you didn't believe with your own eyes what was proof positive of a spherical Earth. I was there and I shot with them for three days and there was an entire experiment that was proven to be flat and they omitted it entirely. And remember, these were not our experiments, it was theirs. Uh, then you looked for and got, no surprise, support from the, from the whack jobs who believed the same. This is actually a quality troll. Uh, believe the same as you, and you said something like, does anyone here believe this? To which, again, they all said no. I think that's an excellent question. If they, if they proved, without a shadow of the doubt, then why didn't anybody walk away from Flat Earth that day? Uh, not, not just the ones at the beach, but all the people that watched the video. Nobody walked away from Flat Earth. And in fact, the, the big reason is because we filmed it for hours and hours and hours. We were there with all our cameras. It's not like the old days where they were the only ones with footage. We shot that thing live. We streamed it live as it happened. The, the, the entire experiment, the entire morning from 5 a.m. up until about noon. And we also released it on YouTube for months in advance. It took, remember, when you're doing a National Geographic thing, they don't release it for months. Sorry. I th here, he keeps going. I think that you, all caps, are the one who needs to offer some proofs, all caps, that the world is flat. You are the one in the minority. Not anymore, I'm not. Since you reject actual science, here we go. What is actual science exactly? 
uh, that proves the Earth is a sphere, I think you should offer up something other than your ramblings and inaccurate science and your comments that suggest that we are all the ones who are nuts. I told someone I work with, and his first response was, why doesn't he just make his way to the edge and take a picture? Oh, yeah, that guy's really brilliant. I challenge you to offer up five proofs that the Earth is flat, scientific proofs, things that either I or anyone else can verify with science. You should use the word science more. I am certain you cannot. I think you just enjoy making your dumb models and making all the other folks go, oh, wow, that's a neat looking model. I can understand that maybe you question the idea of a spherical or flat earth, but for you to be so dogmatically believing that it is flat is light of some very simple science makes me believe that you aren't really interested in the truth. You are just looking for more attention, something you must not have gotten enough as a child. <laughs> Actually, I got a lot of attention as a child. Uh, I doubt that you will take the time to respond to this email. Uh, solicitors, sorry. Um, <clears throat> especially with five proofs that the earth is flat, but I hope you do. You know what I'm going to do? I am going to send him... I'm actually going to respond to this guy. His, name's from, his name is Jocko Gomb. J-A-C-O-G-O-M-B. And I am going to respond to him and send him the five questions that I sent to the physicist at Georgetown, to which he just folded up. All right, this one's called Podcast Interview Request, Tacoma, Washington. Hello, Mark. I host and produce a podcast, the Grit City Podcast, based in Tacoma, Washington. We've been around about five years, roughly 180 episodes. You can find plenty of information about us in the links below. We would love to have you come on and talk Flat Earth and being inside the Truman Show, just a casual conversation to explain your ideas and how people can find out more about you. If you have any interest, please let me know and we can work out the details. Thanks and have a great day, Scott. And yeah, since he's down in Tacoma and they do a live podcast, I it's a little bit of a drive, uh, but I might take the time, go down there, do it. Not until I get back from this conference and probably the next conference, though. All right. This one's called Hi from Star. Hi, Mark. I just learned that you and Patricia are coming to Toronto on April the 30th. Yay. This is so exciting. I look forward to seeing you guys and meeting other local flat earthers. Have a fantastic day and keep up the amazing work, please. And that's from Star. And I had to correct her immediately when she sent that email because uh, what she's thinking about is April 30th when we went to the Toronto Film Festival in 2018 and not april 30th which is coming up in a week uh, no no we, we were already there so she was l listening to an old thing so sorry not going to be not going to be doing toronto this year we are going to be doing the uh calgary conference though and that's in may and i let her i let her know about that this one's called thought i found the golden goose egg Hey, Mark, listening to the latest email show, you were discussing the James May edge of space vacuum test with a G suit, had conversation with Mick West on Twitter. It was funny how he kept avoiding your vacuum challenge and wanted to use the horizon being circular as proof of the curve. He made a specific tweet about you after listening to email about the G suit and the vacuum decided to look for a non uh, tethered spacesuit vacuum test again for the thousandth time. I thought I found it. I was wrong. Apparently, from the conversations, it seems maybe the suit could be inflated, but the appearance of the technician next to the astronaut, uh, the room had air. <laughs> uh, obviously, this means the footage doesn't matter, but here it is anyway. If someone uh, were to watch the whole five minutes, they'd believe he was in a vacuum. You know how, indoctr how indoctrinated we are. Can't watch a five-minute clip or don't know how to fast-forward through a video. Uh, I'll add a Mick West Twitter thread. Uh, it continued farther than I can cared let's see mick west famous flat earth oh yeah he's talking about me has promised to quit flat earth someone sends him a photo of the curve of the horizon so rory send him some yeah four years nobody's emailed me anything and uh we've got photos of 40 000, 5, 000 foot curve 500 foot curve but you're hard pressed to squeeze a pixel out of a 200 foot cruise ship deck uh so on and so on yeah mick west yeah again four years nobody sent me a photograph of the curvature from any altitude which is weird you'd think somebody would email it to me and they haven't why why is that this one's called interview hey mark i saw that that you're often willing to have conversations with supporters and critics alike i've been periodically creating videos about the intersection of flatter theory and popular culture and it would be so amazing to interview you on the topic i know you're a very busy man but even a five-minute conversation would mean the world to me thank you flat earth traveler 
Yep, I already talked to him. This one's called Circumnavigation via both Geographical Poles, Guinness World Records. Next time, Mark, next time someone references this as a globe proof, they obviously have not read the information about the trip. Remarkably, one of the great remaining firsts had still not been achieved by 1979. No one had yet completed a surface circumnavigation of the globe, taking in both the North and South Poles, a journey of some 100,000 miles. Uh, Guinness World Records, 1982, first surface circumnavigation of both geographical poles. And that was sent to me by Rob. So look that up if you get a chance. It's from the GuinnessWorldRecords.com page. This one's called Appreciation from a Round Earther. Hi, Mark. For about two years, I've been fascinated by flat earthers at, at their expense. I found the explanations countering a round earth silly yet entertaining. For a long time, I thought someone who believes the earth is flat must be a total nutcase and probably a real ignorant jerk. Honestly, I still think the former is true in some cases, but I found I've come to understand the latter is not. I recently watched Behind the Curve and expected to hate it. To my own surprise, I changed my opinion of Flat Earthers, and you specifically. I was impressed by your humor and the way you reach out to your community. I never considered the frustration that Flat Earthers go through as they watch friends and family and leave them behind. For this, I want to thank you for being a beacon of hope. I have no idea how many people look up to you, but even if it was just one person, I still think you're, what you're doing is commendable. Whether you meant it to be one or not, among your community, you are a hero. I'll never believe the subject matter of your cause, but I can certainly appreciate how you carry yourself among your peers, something you may not hear often from around Earther. Thank you for what you do. Be good. And that's from Rich. You know what? It's one of the nicest troll emails ever. And I, I do appreciate it. Thank you for that. I, I mean, that's all I could ask for when it comes to somebody who is a globalist. All I could all I could ever hope for there. So there's a banner should pop up like in the corner of the screen that says mission accomplished. I'm not gonna do that though. This one's called podcast interview. Good afternoon, Mark. I'm a student journalist at the city of Glasgow College. Me and my co-host Craig are creating a podcast for our final project at college. Where we have to make an online publication. Ideally, we would like to conduct an interview with you over the next week or so to achieve a more balanced piece. If this is something you would be interested in, please let me know. I hope to hear from you soon. Kind regards, Iona Gracie. Uh, yeah, she's from Scotland, and we did that interview, and she was easier to understand. He had one of those voices that electronics believe it or not guys uh there are some electronics that have problem with voices especially certain people i i, I had dated this girl once and i felt so bad for her she had a voice it wasn't an annoying voice or anything it just had the right pitch and tone frequency and it would turn off voicemail systems <laughs> Uh, not not like your phone recorders that would sit next to your phone. I mean, digital vo voicemail system. It would constantly cut her off, and she knew this, and it really bugged her. I don't know what it was. Uh, I felt bad for her all the time. She was talking halfway through a message, and the, and what it, she could like generate a tone in her voice that would uh, that would kill kill the voicemail system. And uh, he was doing that with a microphone. The microphone was just cutting out on him. It just didn't know what to do. And so I, at the end, I had to repeat some stuff. But you can listen to the interview. It's still pretty good. Uh, the Scottish accent throws me from time to time. Uh, but it was good. This one's called... Let's see. Oh, no. It's podcast interview request. And we started setting that up. Uh, let's see. April 28th. Nope. Can't do it. No, I told him. So we got to wait till we get back. He wanted on the 28th, but I am gone as of tomorrow. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I'm going to be flying. In fact, I'm leaving right now. I'm leaving as soon as this thing's over. I'm going to be going off to New Zealand for a conference down there in Auckland, meeting up with Robbie Davidson and Dave Murphy and um, Patricia Steer and a whole bunch of other people. That's going to be fun. I'm going to be down there for two weeks. Going to go visit the Shire. So uh, if something happens with the plane, if all of a sudden a plane goes missing and it's on the way to New Zealand and you never hear from me again, uh, know that this was my final broadcast and totally worth it. Everything I had, please, by all means, at that point, just go through the 1500 videos that I have up on YouTube again and reproduce them all over and, and hopefully I will, uh, hopefully I'll be remembered this fondly. <laughs> Uh, this one's called Radio Interview on KUHS. Hey, Mark, Aaron here from KUHS 102.5 FM. We had a good chat last month. Wanted to see if you'd be available 
for a call this evening. We'll try to ring you at 10 p.m. Central Standard Time. Thanks for take, taking our call. Lots of fun, Aaron. And by the way, uh, assuming he's assuming this, right? It's like, hey, can we call you tonight? It's like media. They do that last minute type thing. That's how it happened with uh, Russell Brand over in England. Producer, it's like, hey, we're, we're going to be on in five hours. You want to come in? It's like, okay. Uh, this one's called, and that's, by the way, that, that's how it happens. The bigger show you are, the less advanced notice you have to give because most people are like, you know what? Why not? I mean, they're big. Why wouldn't I? I you, you end up compromising for them. Uh, this one's called Flat Earth. Hello, Mark. My name is Reagan Sleggy. I'm from Montgomery, Alabama. I am in sixth grade. I'm 11 years old. I go to school at Floyd Middle School, Floyd Middle Magnet School. I was wondering if you would like to set up a time for an email interview. I was wanting to ask you a few questions about the Flat Earth concept. If you would just please get up with me ASAP with a time and a date for the email interview. Thanks, Regan. And yeah, I totally, sixth grade, you bet. Uh, I was happy to do it and we bounced emails back and forth and it was really cute because she was emailing me one question at a time. <laughs> I mean, she's a sixth grade, what does she know? And, and I had to email, I, like after the third one, I'm going, you know, you can send me more than one question in a, in a row. And she still didn't. I think she, then she was like sending them in pairs. Uh, but she only, I think she had like 10 questions at the end. And I was doing them like during a, I was typing them during a show, uh, a strange world show. It was, it was cute. So hopefully her sixth grade project went well. This one's called a possible reason we are not told the earth is flat and enclosed. Dear Mark, something you said a while ago, and to paraphrase, if we knew with a certainty that we were imprisoned, then we would be seeking to constantly extricate ourselves. You were, I think, referring to animals. However, I tend to agree with you. It would apply to us also. So society dynamics, I was going to say social dynamics, but either way, would change and the purpose would not be to love and nurture, but how the hell can we get out of here and into the possible goodies that are being withheld from us? It would not only be red faces in the establishments, but the enclosing community wielding the magic wand would realize the game was up and it was time to wrap it up and try again. Maybe the mythical Tower of Babel was an analogy for game over. Best wishes for your stay with us in New Zealand, Len. Oh, yeah. Hopefully, he, I'll get to see Len. That's cool. I will look for him. This one's called Possible Interview, University of Washington Journalism. Hey, Mark, my name is Dasha, and I'm a current junior at the University of Washington within the journalism program. I'm taking an audio storytelling class, and the end result is four to eight minute podcast like report, and I would love it to essentially do this on you, your outreach and content you produce and local ties to Washington. After watching a few videos, I think what you create is interesting. I want to create a genuine conversation like story about you and your years as being a flat earth advocate. Please let me know if this would ever be a possibility in the following weeks. I would love to talk to you and potentially meet. Please let me know if you want any additional information. Thank you, Dasha. Yep. And that is set up for after I get back. Provided I survive the journey to the Shire. I'm going to go visit the Shire too while I'm down there. Big fan of Lord of the Rings because I think it's going to end up being the only franchise that hasn't been decimated recently. I'm crossing my fingers. I'm probably going to go see the Avengers movie while I'm down there. But honestly, after watching Captain Marvel, I am more worried than ever that they are going to put this overpowered character in there and just wreck it. But I'm hoping that the directors, the brothers, hoping that they can keep it, keep Disney from, from getting their grimy mitts over this thing. Uh, this one's called Flatter's Curious. Hi, Mark. I've been watching your YouTube videos and listening to as many podcasts as I can. I read your book over the weekend. Just want to say thank you for blazing a new trail. Can you recommend any reading material to help me share with others? Keep the faith. And that's from Misha. Not to be confused with Effie Mishka, which is different. Uh, reading material. Actual books? Yeah, there's stuff. It depends. There's a lot of stuff on the biblical side. Uh, from um, Zen Garcia and Rob Skiba and Robbie Davidson. But if you're talking non-biblical, a little tougher to go into. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll refer some stuff to you if I get a chance. I'm not going to rattle them off here because honestly, I'd, I'd have to look through my pile of stuff that's upstairs. 
This one's called Podcast Invitation. Hi, Mark. We just finished watching Beyond the Curve and truly loved it. We are so fascinated, although somewhat ignorant, about the Flatters movement and your instrumental role in it. We run a comedy philosophy podcast called Karl Marx Does the Washing Up. Oh, that's funny. And are always super intrigued by alternative ideas. They used a word there that I've never heard in my life. Epistemologies? Yeah. And, and again, what I try, one of the rules I kind of go by is unless you see the, you hear the word on CNN, I'm not going to use it because the man on the street is never going to know that word. I mean, I'm, I'm older, I'm 50 now, and I've never seen that word in my life, even in text. Anyway, sorry, not to pick. Uh, so, of course, we would totally love to have you on the podcast to discuss something with you along the lines of story, belief, or truth. If this is of interest to you, please let us know. You can find our podcast and all the usual channels. All the best with love, uh, Elas and Shy. Yep, and I wrote them back. I think I already did that one. Did I? I don't remember. I've done so many. Uh, this one's called "Take Talking on Monday for My Class. Mark, you wanted me to send a confirmation email to confirm the time and date if you could possibly be available on Monday uh, the 22nd from 9.25 to 10.15 for me to call you if this is all possible i would it would be such a great experience if you can't thanks for at least answering my call uh, and that's from connor connor was from a high school and he was being super ambitious probably over -amb overly ambitious where he was setting up a call for me to talk to his class about flat earth he's he's into it uh, however he did this without before asking his teacher and then his teachers i think shut him down which is unfortunately so and how old is he so if he it says con man so it's 2003 that is yeah he's yeah he's only 16 years old so cool but it never happened so that's all right hey he had the right idea and maybe it will happen in the future we'll see this is called latest interview hi mark just finished watching you interview on the fallen state did you notice that jeff twitches his eye a lot he seemed to be a bit perturbed at times but i agree that doing a mutual experiment of some sort would allow him to see more outside the paradigm but then he would have to reconcile two conflicting sets of facts, yeah. On another note, I watched a seminar by a guy named Michael Tellinger called Sound Resonance Magnetics, in which he states that the Earth is not heli heliocentric and comes real close to stating it to be enclosed but never quite gets there. A lot of interesting evidence to help explain sun, moon, Earth, etc. Just throwing it out there for your leisure, and that's from Kirk. Yep, Fallen State. And, uh, if you get a chance, go to the Fallen State YouTube page and you'll see a debate I did with Jeff Zwerink, uh, physicist out of Southern California. I'm not allowed to put it on my channel because they've got strict rules about that. We weren't even allowed to... Robbie Davidson and Patricia Steer were sitting right there with me and they weren't even allowed to pull out their cell phones and record it. So uh, and that's fine. It happens. And, and I had to sign a waiver in the, in the whole nine yards. But it was a fun interview, and I'm glad they put it up there in, in multiple parts. This one's called The Word You Had Trouble With. Uh, the word, Mark, the word is curve and pervert equals curvert. Someone who loves the curve is addicted to the curve. Oh, thanks, Rob. Awesome. This one's called Questioning Globe Earth Motives. Hi, Mark. I have seen a rise of Flat Earth content online recently, which led me to discovering you. I was hoping you could answer one question for me. I'm not sure if this has been answered before and just covered up the controversy and arguing. However, I can't find an answer to the following question. If the Earth is flat, what is the reason for the government conspiracy to cover that up and tell everyone that it is a globe? What would be their motivations? I would love to hear your opinion on the topic. Thanks for your time. And that's from a guy literally calling himself questioning Flat Earth. Uh, yeah, just watch the Flat Earth Clues. I go into it in great detail. And um, just the, the short version is power. Uh, you don't want to give up power. And we're talking about upsetting the balance of civilization, potentially. Uh, religiously, academically, economically, all of them. It is a short conversation. I wouldn't have done it the same. I've said this many times. Look, look, if I was told that the world looked, you know, was an enclosed system, a big building in 1960, would I tell the population? Nope. I would try to figure out a way of getting the population to a state where I could roll out the story and spin it the way I wanted to spin it. And now we've got the infrastructure for that. We've got high-speed internet. We've got social media. We've got 6 billion smartphones. Now is the perfect time, which is why I think it's coming out. This one's called The Philippines. 
Hey, Mark, long time. Hank in Shoreline here. This maybe is a long shot. However, to your knowledge, could you point me to any videos about what's going on in the Philippines? Just imagine you reading this on air. Uh, even if you have nothing, quite possibly your listeners might. Mark, thanks in advance. What are we talking about with the Philippines? And this was sent uh, at least a week ago. What, what, what What's happening in the Philippines that I don't know about? Did I miss something? I don't know. Sorry, I'd have to look it up. You got to remember, I absorb a lot of media, but I maybe it was uh, something else that I, I don't know. This one's called... Oh, it's a follow-up. Good. Uh, Flat Earth Curious. Hi, Mark. Thanks for your email and the links. I feel so humbled you replied. I saw you on the Netflix flick. I don't think I'd use that Netflix flick. Behind the curve and had to learn more. I am a Hindu living in the UK, so feel a little lost by the lot by a lot of Christian material. We do converge though. Spherical Earth always seemed wrong as a child, but I could never rationalize. I remember staying up in 1969 to watch Grainy the Moon Landing. Yeah. Uh, the list of my great un unanswered is as follows. One, how come the world never seems to spin? Two, Antarctica. Three, is there a multi-faith flat earth movement? Four, was Kubrick an accomplice on a more personal level? Have you visited the UK? If you have, have you read any David Icke? Sorry for being a bit of a fanboy, but you're an inspiration. Uh, did I write him back? No, I haven't written him back, and I'm going to have to do that. Jeez, I don't know what, I, what happened there. I think, again, sometimes it gets lost in the shovel. This one's called Bill Nye the Guy. Hi, Mark. Please don't include any information of mine. Okay, I won't. I just want to alert you to the new episode of Blind Spot. Episode name is Obama, in which Bill Nye plays as himself, but also a scientist who's the father of an FBI agent. Uh, some, some, something's wrong with that title. In this episode, he talks and teaches about CRISPR. Thought you might want to know. I found it interesting, but I've been talking to my kids about The Simpsons be, having foretold many things months and even years before they came to pass. I'm hoping with all the future jobs as far as Bible prophecy goes that Bill Nye isn't as giving us spoilers. On another note, I believe that the powers that be on this world know that time is limited on the Great Deception. I think they are just changing things on YouTube and Google to slow you down, not trying to stop you. You are aiding them and getting the truth out far more slowly than they could do directly. I thank you for all you've done. I'm greatly appreciative of your demeanor. You handle trolls very gracefully. Thanks, I try. I now have a job that currently lets me listen to your shows for about six hours every weekday. Wow, six hours a day? I mix a few others in from time to time. I have a lot of catching up to do. Please send me the 12 slides, five questions, and survival guide. By the way, not sure why... I, but I was able to watch your interview with Good Morning Britain on YouTube just last week. Well, yeah, it's because you're, you're, you're in Britain, right? I didn't search for it either. I just let your interviews run and it came up. Thank you, me. P.S. My 8 and 11 year old, thank you for giving us more reason to keep God in our lives as this world does not make it easy. Does anyone make the Flat Earth for Kids series yet? No, no, they don't. Not really. No, no Flat Earth for Kids series yet. Uh, but as far as the, the, the Good Morning Britain interview, yeah. It's it's banned in the United States, but it's not. I don't think it's banned over in Britain, which is weird. So overseas, eh, one of those strange things. Either way, this one's called Jason in Detroit. Good morning, Mark. I want to thank you for your time and effort you put into the flat Earth. I recently started giving the topic a serious chance when noticing my Bible makes more sense if the Earth is indeed flat. Couldn't help dropping the globe icon. iPhone iPhone, yeah. I can't say I'm 100% bought into at this point. I mean, let's face it, it's kind of a mind job. A little Matrix reference there. But I did want to show my appreciation for all the effort you put into this. Above all, I want to encourage you for continuing moving forward. If nothing else, you've opened one person's eyes. Thank you, Jason. Cool. Thank you, Jason. This one's called Paris, seen from New York on Flat Earth. Hi, all just below my new video you may enjoy throwing towards the trolls. Feel free to use and share if you wish. Best wishes to all. And this was sent by Flat Max UK. And it's called... What's it called? Don't know yet. And it's called... Must Watch. Paris Visible from New York on Flat Earth. From Flat Max UK. Yep, I'm subscribed. Gave it a thumbs up. Thank you for that. 
And that was sent to a whole bunch of people. This one's called About Flat Earth Stuff. Hi, Mark. My name is Shinji. People call me Cheech. I'm a male. <laughs> I was, I, I, okay. I was wondering if there's a way for me to talk to you, either through instant message or on Discord. I have some questions about Flat Earth, some genuine questions, and I was wondering if I could somehow talk to you about this, learn something from you about this. This is a long shot, as I'm pretty sure you're busy with other things that are far more important than talking to me. Even if the answer is no, because you're too busy, I would greatly appreciate if you let me know so I know the message reached you. Thank you so much for reading. And did I write him back? No, I did not. And that's because I skim emails first. And so I'll put that in my to-do pile. Hopefully I can get that done before I get the heck out of here. This one's called, hey buddy, just a quick question. Hey Mark, hope all is well, mate. Just wondering if you enjoyed my book, uh, Brother One Consciousness. I know it's deep, so I'm interested to hear your thoughts, bro. Thanks, that's from Tony. Yes, I did enjoy it, Tony. Hopefully you're listening to this. Uh, good book, big book, thick book. A uh, lot of heady stuff in there, uh, but I did enjoy it. Uh, again, love where, you're, where your mind is going. You're definitely thinking outside the box. And uh, I wish you success. You know, when it comes to resonating with people, it might be a little tough for some people because the average person on the street, uh, they, they like stuff really, really boiled down nowadays. But who knows? Maybe. Maybe you got a shot. This one's called Onward to Myrtle. Hoping to meet up with Robert. Forch, F-O-E-R-T-S-C-H, Fort, Forch. He, you've seen, you, you know exactly who he is if you saw the documentary. Hey Mark, recently for Essentials to make my own t-shirts, I made an azimuthable equidistant hoodie, hoping to spark conversations. I It worked on occasion. I made an I am Mark Sargent t-shirt. <clears throat> I assume that I am blank statement will cause people to Google out of curiosity. The family and I are heading to Myrtle Beach tomorrow. I'm hoping to meet up with Robert. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, otherwise known as Yub, YouTube Truth. We've chat some, hoping to inconspicuously slide into his live stream one morning with the I am Mark Sargent T on the beach. That would be epic. Hopefully my wife agrees. I can only imagine how busy your schedule is. But I'm eventually going to give you a holler one day, going to flat smack hotel patrons via writing the usual red pill statements in the sand, Google flat earth clues, the earth is flat, space is fake, NASA lied, talk to you later, Virgil from Traveler's Rest, South Carolina. This one's called Flat Earth Research. Hi Mark, I received the attached document from someone who heard about the Calgary conference and put together her own research. She said I could share the document. With anyone who might find it interesting, so here it is. Here it is. Cheers, Sarah. Sarah Stewart is the one doing the conference in Calgary. I highly um, endorse this event. I'm going to be speaking at it, and you can check it out at Eventbrite. So if you're looking for the website and you go to Eventbrite.com, you will find it. This one's called The Higgs Fake, How Particle Physicists Fooled the Nobel Committee. Hi, Mark. You may have an interest in reading this small book from a young German physicist, Alexander Unzicker. It's uh, from Amazon. He argues about how wrong the standard model of particle physics saying that the current knowledge of physics is at the level of the 1930s. No other discoveries were confirmed. Besides, he refers as well how many Nobel Prizes in physics were attributed based on fake results that were just not proven afterwards. He makes reference to other scientists like Michio Kaku and Brian Cox that are basically actors. Well, if this is the case for the standard model of particle physics mentioned by a physicist, then the case for admission of a flat Earth is not far in the horizon. Best, Rui. Thanks, Rui. That's awesome. This one's called Directed Energy Device Theory. Hi, Mark. Feel free to read on air or not. Some topics can get you banned, and maybe this one. The video, and I have downloaded a copy if needed, provides a very interesting analysis. Would love to hear your thoughts on the France news item. And the video on YouTube is called... Da -da -da -da, Notre Dame Incinerated. I think it's about uh, direct energy weapons. I have not watched it. I will get a chance. Wow. She did pretty well with that one. Uh, she's got 43,000 subs and she's already got 340,000 views on it. Of course, most of it's about the title because she got it out so fast, but interesting. 
This one's called Interview for a Documentary Film. Yep, yep, we did a, a phone call that was with Francesca. It was from a group out of New York City by a New York High School, Creative Arts High School. And I did that with them. That went very well. They had some great questions and they recorded a video and... Uh, I only record the audio and I put the audio up so you can listen to it. It's from uh, New York City High School. You'll, you'll know it if you see it. This one's called The Shrinking Sun. <clears throat> Greetings, Mark. Here's another question you could uh, pose to scientists. Why does the sun get smaller as it moves towards the horizon? We have tons of videos taken by non-flat earthers that clearly show the sun de decreasing in size rather than moving across the sky. Uh, maintaining it. Uh, on a spinning globe, the sun doesn't move closer or farther away. It only appears to move up and then downward. Regards, Jeff. Yep, absolutely right. This one's called Watch Lovely Money the Damned on YouTube. Just look at the thumbnail. That's from Joseph. Yep. Yep. We gotta remember that the Flat Earth now has been out for four years. Flat Earth Clues has been out for over four years now. And we've seeped into just about every aspect of media you could think of, especially the writers. The writers have, have introduced us into a whole bunch of stuff. This one's called The Mark and Sarah Show. Mark, Emily Pittsford sent me this. Looks like you're stuck with me. That's from Sarah Stewart. And yeah, uh, she there was a tweet. Uh, she's a natural at this. Please consider her making her a part of the secret show. Yeah, she was very good. Having Sarah from the Calgary conference, I had her on the secret show, kept her on for the all segments, and uh, she actually threw me at one point. I don't know what happened, but I actually lost track of time, and I tried to close down the show 30 minutes early. And Peanut Gallery was behind the scenes going, what is wrong with you? Are you on drugs? He goes, this is why you shouldn't have women as guests. <laughs> he didn't say that. I did. All right, this one's called Watch Common Law Motions and Procedure Part 1 and 2 on YouTube. Uh, one of the most interesting and informative things I've watched in a long time. Uh, Mark, William here from Northern California. I think you would really appreciate the video. So many interesting legal tidbits that would help us in the cause for the truth of where we live. He even talks about how and why people and authorities call one crazy at about the one hour, eight minute mark. I know it's crazy long, but I say we need to arm ourselves with as much legal truth as possible for a war for truth is coming right maybe listening while on the plane would be an option of course it would be very interesting to see how much of this did you know i'm sure david mondalado weiss would definitely love this info that's his middle name i didn't know that uh thanks for all you do and thanks for all the fateful phone call or for the fateful phone call yesterday william okay i will check that out thank you this one's called flat earth Hi, Mark. I'm currently a ninth grader uh, in a public school who believes in a flat earth. I've told my teachers and other students this is also given them proof. However, some students and teachers still refuse to listen or even do an ounce of research on the theory. Is there any way that I can counter their arguments and prove to them the earth is flat? Thanks, Ryan. Uh, yeah, and I sent him the five questions that I sent the Georgetown professor. And again, appreciate. <laughs> so ironic. Uh, so the again the director who made behind the curve he wanted to point out you know the warning that, that you know kids shouldn't be involved in this even without without stating it in the film they want to want to put that out there and in doing so directed all these kids to contact me and turned me into sort of like the Pied Piper <laughs> of flat earth there's your t-shirt me walking around with all these kids following me asking me flat earth questions I've talked to so many since the documentary came out. I mean, way, way more. I mean, orders of magnitude more than before it came out. I mean, yeah, a few kids contact me here and there. But once, you know, the documentary, 12-year-olds asking me a question. And I'm talking to them, applauding them from the stage. And what, what do you think is going to happen, man? So nice, nice work, Daniel. <laughs> This one's called What Else, Flat Earth? Hello, Mark. I've been following you for about one to two years. And thank you for all you do. Although you put my world into a tailspin, I'm a person that searches for the truths. It's a very hard thing to do nowadays to find the truth. Thanks for all you do. Everyone that I talk to, especially my four kids, think I'm nuts. But being young and just getting out of 12 years of school in which they say this is the truth because that's what they were taught 
We live in a world of deception. I do have a couple of questions that many ask, and I thought I would go to the man, that being you. Anyway, dinosaurs always come up. Really? Uh, showing Earth to be a million years old. What are your thoughts on that? Also, the tides of the oceans. Uh, I know what they say, the magic of gravity and gravitational pulls from the moon. Anyway, your thoughts would help me with my cause and exposing this huge lie. Thanks again. I hope you have the same time to answer me. Also, I tried to sign up to Enclosed World and it doesn't seem to let me register. That's from Joseph. Okay, he, he had two questions here. One is, is the Earth millions of years old? Well, it might be millions of years old. But not, it's not hundreds of millions years, of years old. Meaning, it's it, there's no doubt, and even mainstream science will agree, that there's civilizations out there that go way beyond our history. The sunken cities off of Japan, sunken cities off of India, Bosnian pyramids, uh, Bimini Road, the real pyramids, they, they all point to something that's very, very old. Uh, and then, of course, I do believe in dinosaurs. I do. I, I do. But I don't believe that they're millions of years old. I think the carbon dating system... Uh, and evolution is is completely artificial and there was terraforming done on all levels not just terraforming of the land uh, but genetic manipulation when it comes to, to people and so how old is this world i don't know i don't know how long it takes between civilizations may not even take that long to be honest maybe not i mean you might be able to accelerate some things don't know whatever technology was used to build this place it's their rules not ours um, also, the tides of the oceans, they're controlled by down, from down below. The same force, it's what we do. If we had to build tides, and we've done this in various simulations now, uh, if we build tides from down below in, in our simulations, we don't do it from a directional gravitational source, which would be the moon. What you're talking about there is taking an object that's very, very small, not 2,000 miles wide, but less than 50 miles wide, and a attaching a directional gravitational beam to it with a, with a spectrum pattern uh, you know a wide broad spectrum pattern no no it's not how you do it that'd be really inefficient and tricky at best uh, to pull that off with physics so you control it from down below uh, no different the the same molecular magnetic force that is gravity uh, if it's if it's being created from below that's what you use for the tides there you go uh let's see what else we got how many more can we do we can do a few more this one's called, Are You Still a Flat Earther? Mark, I just watched the Netflix documentary and I'm curious to know if you are still a flat earther. Have you seen this? Uh, and he sent me a video that's from a guy named Ryan and I'm pretty sure I know what this is. He's going to reference a troll. Oh yeah, there it is. It's and it's recent. It's uh, The earth is, earth is definitely not flat from Professor Dave Explains. And he got 72,000 views on it. He's got 400,000 subs. It's impressive considering I watched this stuff. It was not that good. What I think was more interesting was the advertisement that popped up before the video, which was from masterclass.com, which is Chris Hatfield, Canadian astronaut. He's doing a masterclass on being an astronaut. Uh-huh. Yeah, because uh, that's something that people can go into and just be. Only 500 people have ever even claimed to be in space. All of them were military. So... Yeah, master class on being an astronaut. Got to sneak that one in there. And he's standing in front of a blackboard with all these equations on it. I guarantee he did not write. Uh, all right, this one's called, thanks for a great video. Mark, okay, the world is flat and stationary. We are definitely not a big-ass, inconsequential spinning ball. NASA is a joke, no real surprise from any governmental propaganda agency. Where have you gone since the realization, as with most be propaganda machine fabricated stories like uh, World Trade Center 7, very few seem able, willing, or capable even to consider a different narrative because science has taught them not to think, rather accept what is when clearly what what is has some massive gaping holes. Yeah, I hate plot holes. Hate them, hate them, hate them. Uh, if, if you hate plot holes as much as I do, not just in real life, which they shouldn't be in real life, uh, but also in the media, please, by all means, I've, I've gotten into him recently. Uh, I've gone through most of the stuff I, I need to listen to because uh, he, he had, doesn't have a ton of videos. It's a, a YouTuber called Mauler, M-A-U-L-E-R, uh, sort of a takeoff on Darth Maul. And so instead of Darth Mauler, it's just Mauler. Uh, and he reviews Star Wars movies mostly. I mean, he, he reviews science fiction stuff. 
uh, and a few superhero movies, but he's extremely detailed and really big on plot holes. He will break it down. If you're a writer, I would be terrified of this man. Seriously, Hollywood should hire him immediately as being a script doctor. He could sit down, whoever's writing. He's kind of what we used to call him. I used to be a sales engineer for time and attendance software, and I would be in a room when a salesperson was trying to pitch a software package to whatever company it was, and I'd be in the corner of the room shaking my head. You know, they'd look back at me and say, is this possible? You know, because the, the company said, yeah, but I really want your software to do this because we do all these custom enhancements to the software. And I'd be back in the corner going, yeah, no, no, that's not happening. That's not even possible. In fact, why would you even suggest such a thing? Um, and that's what this guy, the Mahler, should be doing. I know he's British, but he should literally go to Hollywood and any company, any of the studios would be lucky to have him. And you know what I mean. I mean, but super quick example, I, and I know we're getting off topic here. Super quick, quick example was he did a breakdown of The Last Jedi. Remember, the movie was only two hours long and his review on it was five hours long. And it was nonstop narrative. I mean, he talked nonstop for five freaking hours. And it was amazing. I mean, I know he does. He writes it. It's all scripted. It's not off the cuff. He writes it all out and he reads it and he reads fast. And it's But it's very concise. Uh, and again, <laughs> uh, I, I appreciate people that are into the details, that look into things and say, objectively, there are problems here. Uh, sorry. Anyway, uh, let's get back to the email. I have heard every programmed response, gravity, looming, mirage, reflection, refraction, convection. Okay, stay in your paradigm, but where are the real scientists asking real questions? Yeah, it's true. Certainly some folks on YouTube have some very interesting points. Still, how do we explain fossils, carbon dating? Why, for the grace of God, can't we get one international telescope to point at anything orbiting or in space? The space station, geosynchronous satellite, the Hubble, the moon, high-resolution image of the moon. Yeah, you're right. There's no high <laughs> Yes, to all these things. Yes. I imagine soon VR will get so good, we will be unable to ascertain any distinction between reality and VR imagination. Well, the, the tough part is doing it live. Our software is good, but if you're doing it live, like anything, it's why television shows don't, don't do it live. And you never do things. You always have rehearsals. You always have rehearsals. You never, even the news does most of their stuff, uh, they, they pre-records things. And that is because it's really, you're leaving things to chance. And sorry, our software, as good as it is, isn't bulletproof, isn't solid state all the way around from beginning to end. Anyway, uh, let's see. Is there a list of observable facts which need to be answered now, which could be tested using their scientific measures? Where are any or all real images from high above the surface? Where else have you gotten to since you started this journey? I hope all is well, Steve. Um, short answer is I've kind of stayed where I where my niche is, which is recruiting. Remember, I'm the freshman recruiter for this content. I get interviewed a lot. Uh, I answer questions quickly. I answer them basically, and the, I answer things with the general public in mind. I know that bug, probably bugs some people. It's like, look, the average person on the street doesn't even know what eight inches per mile squared is. They don't know what that number means. And so I don't even use that. I mean, I have to even boil that down for people. And it's still tough to explain. If eight inches per mile squared glazes over the eyes of most of your audience, then anything above that you should not touch, not even close, which is why the clues didn't have any math in them. Because the average person, a, pi a picture is worth a thousand words, and that is what they, uh, they that's what they expect. Uh, not to say that people don't want to learn, they want to be entertained, but it's kind of true. So if you can kind of trick them into learning via different methods, you know, Schoolhouse Rock would be a great example of that, then that's what you should use. And the lowest common denominator, otherwise known as the masses, otherwise known as lots of people you know, that's that's what my job is. So it's it's getting the word out there to as many people as possible and then letting them, again, which is why I say do your own research and ask questions. So I don't have to. I didn't come up with the laser experiments. I didn't come with long, up with long distance photography experiments or weather balloon experiments or all that. So I just connected the dots. That's all I did and said, hey, you might want to look into this and then come up with stuff on your own. And man, did people do that. Uh, I, who knew that everyone was going to start buying P900s and P1000s and running off to the beaches and just shooting photography? 
people we, we created a whole new generation of photographers that don't even take pictures of anything else but the rice <laughs> they don't take pictures of family they, they, they run off to the beach so that's what i do uh that's the community is so big that uh, I am now kind of just a, a wheel in it, wheel in the machine that is flat earth that will not be stopped, for lack of a better term, uh, or cliche. Let's go into this. This one's called Need Clarification. We're going to do a few more. Uh, hi, Mark. I have never agreed with your proposal of the stars, moon, and sun being projection of the screen similar to a planetarium until I started thinking about the verse in Revelation. Uh, Revelation 1-7. Every eye will see him. Yep, that's the big one. Words have meaning and every eye should mean every eye. This would be easy if it was projected on a screen in the sky. With that being said, do you have a theory uh, for meteor showers and meteor gates? Do they simply pass through the windows or heaven or is there another explanation of this phenomenon? Thanks so much, Jason. Uh, when it comes to meteors and showers, I would look into one of the most popular non-canon books of the Bible, which is the book of Enoch. Uh, the three books that I recommend that aren't in, that were not made canon uh, would be the book of Enoch, the book of Jasher, and the Testament of Solomon, which is a whole another thing I don't even want to get into. If you want to, want to listen to that, go to Paul in the Plains channel. We talked about that for a full hour just recently, and hopefully he'll put it up while I am on conference slash vacation uh let's do a couple more and then we'll call it good because i've got stuff to do this one's called podcast with john zirka hey mark i was wondering if you would like to make an appearance on a twitch scream on john zirka's podcast john is an avid flat earther and for love for you to come on and share your perspective with his audience john asked me to get in contact with you and if you would like to come on the podcast, you can reply to this email or I can forward you John's information so that you can be in direct contact with him. Hope to hear back from you. Thanks in advance, Ahmad. Yep, I did. And we will schedule it. All right, let's do two or three more. Then we'll call it good. This one's called, what's up? Hi, Mark. I just listened to your interview with the high school students. You told them about your debate questions you sent to the experts and you said they folded right up. Yep, absolutely, they did. What about Simon Dan and his answers? He didn't fold up, but answered with some pretty plausible replies. I'm a big fan of yours, but I have to say it seems like you're ducking this a bit. Uh, could you tell me if you ever answered back to him so I can watch it? Thanks, Steve Harris from Minnesota. Uh, okay, first off, Simon Dan is a troll. Two things. I mean, one, yes, he actually puts his real face out there. Thank God. Uh, I was hoping that at least one troll out there would, would put their real face. And he couple things. One, he doesn't use his real name. I have no idea who he is. Don't know what his qualifications are. He's definitely not a scientist, as far as I can tell. And what else about him? Oh, yeah, he buys subs. Uh, you can look up on Social Blade, go through his history. He Now, he, does he have some legitimate subscribers? Yes, sure he does. But I know he buys subs, so which means he's not an honest man. He doesn't have a lot of integrity. And he's just addressing my questions for hits. So I am under no obligation to respond to that guy in any way, shape, or form. That being said, Steve, if, if an actual scientist would like to respond to me, and they all have access to the same sort of videos, then why haven't they? Why? In fact, what, the bigger question is, why did the professor from Georgetown, who I did not solicit, they came to me. A German television team came to me with him in hand and he agreed to it and i had his name and the whole nine yards i will not give it out here and in fact the, there's an audio for it well i won't tell you where to look but it's on my channel there's where i'm talking to the german television team and they why do you back out what why do you fold that's the bigger question it's fine a troll comes along oh i've got some answers to it no, too late no simon dan and i are never going to speak sorry he's just not nearly good enough this one's called Watch Hall of Claims Rooftop Parking on YouTube. Mark, the per first positive commercial alluding to the real truth about gravity. 30 second commercial. Be interested in what you think. It may be starting to tip. Well, we're getting there. We're getting there, but we still have to hit primetime mainstream first. This one's called Interview Request. Hi, Mark. Just starting a Flat Earth channel. I would like to have small interview. I'm Polish. Oh, okay. 
but leaving in but living in you <laughs> but leaving in UK sorry for my English I've never seen you speaking with somebody I'm actually the way he's spelling this stuff is seriously like instead of uh, living he spells it leaving speaking is with two E's with somebody from Poland I can be first B with two E's I've seen most of your staff, most of your staff, but I may have some interesting questions. He spelled it staff. Have a good day, Andy. Watch, awesome, awesome. And I said, hey, I'd be happy to. Uh, and I think I did. I think I did. I, in fact, I talked to him and uh, I put it up there. I put the audio up there. That was a lot of fun to do. Okay, you know what? Let's end on this one. Let's end on a happy one. Uh, we won't dwell on the whole troll thing because uh, there's a lot of trolls. Hey, honestly, I wish that every troll, I wish there was a hundred more trolls out there like Simon Dan, and I hope they did videos on me every day because all it does is help my metrics. All you're doing, and, I, and you're never going to stop, which I love. It's uh, you're just shooting wooden arrows into a bonfire. It looks from a distance like you're doing something. All you're doing is making it bigger. All you're doing is recruiting for us. No different than the documentary. No different than every mainstream media piece. You're doing our work for us. Fair warning. Okay, so this one's called Wishing You a Happy Birthday. And I know I'm not supposed to read the whole thing, and I'm not going to even say who it's from. Uh, but what happened was, uh, and I, I'm looking at the whole thing here, is that uh, tomorrow tomorrow is my birthday, just so you guys know. And I will, it's going to be weird for me because it's the only birthday I've ever had where I'm not actually going to be on the ground. I'm literally in the air because of the time zone difference and the amount of hours it takes to get to New Zealand. I'm going to be in the air the entire, my entire birth, the entire 24th. I will be literally in a plane. And uh, some people sent me a cake. So they made a flat earth, a flat earth cake and I'll pull it up here real fast. The uh, it says happy birthday Mark stay ahead of the curve and it's a chocolate it's a chocolate cake with a chocolate frosting on top circular cake with uh, with maps with a with a paper map wrapping around the outside and then they put seashells with a flat earth AZ map on top of it which is basically a giant flat earth a, um, AE map button that's on top of it. And some people, and I don't know who you are, they, they try to be anonymous. Again, 90% of our members are in the Flat Earth Closet, which I totally respect. And they sent me this cake. And in fact, I'm reading the, the, the email. It's like, we are ecstatic to hear that you like the cake. So I took some shots of it, including me with the cake, and I sent it off to them. And so the pictures were unbelievable and simply out of this world. Uh, CJ and Y, which are, is the cake company, have outdone themselves. It was a very good cake. I ate half of it at least, which is pretty amazing considering I just got it a few days ago. And it's a big one of those super dense cakes. Uh, please save the AE map button used to decorate the top of the cake. Of course, it's on the fridge right now attached with a magnet. It should be about four inches diameter and could be a useful prop. You know what? I've already got some useful props, but that's you're, you're absolutely right. It's not, it's not bad. Uh, you may wish to pin it to your shirt, jacket, or, or white coat during any and all interviews so you can have a quick, easy reference model to the AE map for the cameras. Take care. God bless. Wishing you a happy birthday. And that's from uh, some Flat Earth friends of mine. Again, I'm not going to... I only know one of their names. In fact, even that one, I don't know his real name. Uh, I think I might, though, because you had to pay for the cake. And they uh, they actually accidentally let it slip. Who, but it didn't say the full name. Anyway, it was a lot of fun. Thank you, guys. Um, I, I will read one paragraph, though, before I go. And that is... Uh, make sure this thing is still... Everything is still up and running. One second... One sec. I want to make sure I, I really will read one little paragraph, which is uh, we want to let you know that we love you love your work. Your ceaseless dedication to the truth is not only impressive, but inspirational. Hang in there and know that there are many millions, possibly billions behind you. Although we cannot openly come out and claim this, there is coming a day, however, that the truth and disclosure will be out and open as the midday sun. Perhaps you will get to see the full impact of your work at that time. God bless you and your family. Keep it flat. And hail Hydra. <laughs> awesome. Anyway, thanks, guys. Uh, remember, you can send your questions to uh, msargent23 at comcast.net. That's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net. And I'm going to get on a plane. So until next time, guys, stay flat.